Game controllers can be tricky to perfect, but some designs have stood the test of time. It's got blinking blue lights on it. Who doesn't like blinking blue lights? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 video game controllers. For this list, we'll be glancing through the history of video games to find the most comfortable, practical, and well-designed controllers. Now you're playing with power. We're specifically focusing on first-party controllers. As such, mouse and keyboard must be omitted on the grounds that there is no first-party setup. PC Master Race for life. Damn it. Number 10, Sega Genesis 6 button controller. Sega always just put such just tremendous attention to detail and build quality into their products. To think that Sega was once a vanguard of superb hardware design. Though the original controller for the Sega Genesis was generally praised, there was one slight flaw. Its three button setup wasn't conductive to playing fighting games such as Street Fighter or Mortal Kombat. Enter the six button controller, which trimmed down the first controller's size, but added three more face buttons to better cater to games reliant on more than four buttons. And then you got the XYZ buttons here, which are raised, so you can easily tell when you're playing what buttons your finger is actually touching. On top of its effortlessly compact design, the six button controller had a mode button to allow players the ability to play three button Genesis games with ease. It was really just a good product. So if you're playing like Comic Zone, the X, Y, and Z functionality would be removed if you were holding the mode button as you started up the game. Number nine, Nintendo Entertainment System Controller. The Nintendo action set including the control deck with double game pack and zapper light gun for just $99.99 at Toys R Us. Sometimes the classics never die. Case in point, when the Nintendo Entertainment System was launched in 1985, it came with a straightforward controller that was immediately recognizable. It's simple, yet very effective. To wit, the NES controller was rectangular in shape and consisted of two action buttons, a directional pad, and start and select buttons. Solid controls for games like Contra or Metroid. The simplicity at play was clear here, yet it was embraced because of the controller's durable design and its usefulness in regards to the era's predominantly action-oriented titles. It's the Legend of Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ganon are pretty bad. Octorox Tech Tech's levers too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Number eight, Atari 2600 joystick. This is the legendary single joystick, single button controller for the Atari 2600 video computer system. In gaming's early years, simple ideas led to great things. Such was the case with the Atari CX40 joystick, one of the two original controllers to come with the 2600, next to the Pong Paddle. And they're really excellent controllers and the kind of controllers that we don't get anymore. The CX40 was certainly respectable in appearance, black with a segmented circular pattern in the middle. And I like that it says top up here on the top, giving you a sense of direction. But its true genius lay in the basic layout. It was built around a single red action button and an easy to grip joystick designed perfectly to fit most people's hands. Back in the day when our hands were a good bit smaller, we might play it and gripping the entire controller like you would in the arcade. More importantly, the one button, one stick approach lent game developers a creative challenge, making games that were polished and enjoyable while using such simple means of control. Number seven, Nintendo 64 controller. This was a truly revolutionary console for its time. It's weird, it's wonderful, and it's quite unlike anything else. The large M-shaped build and intricate spread of the buttons were by no means standard, but these elements would be transformative for the industry at large. Anyone see any resemblance whatsoever? I certainly do. The N64's controller helped push forward the concept of the analog stick, with the controller's large size actually working well in conjunction with the central stick. Maybe not the first analog stick in the gaming industry, it was definitely one that made it more mainstream. Players found the controller to be comfortable to grip, and its C buttons reflected the changing nature of face buttons, particularly in regards to 3D games. We'll probably never see the likes of this again. Number six, Wii Remote. We would like to play. Once upon a time, a sleek little remote inspired people to dream. Based around motion control, the Wii Remote intrigued the gaming media at large with its basic white coloring, compact button placement, and general control variety. The remote could be linked to a nunchuck accessory for more precise play, turned on its side in the vein of an NAS controller, or attached to the Dual Stick Classic controller. But more importantly, it featured pointer functionality to replicate a mouse, motion controls that even Grandpa could use, oh, and a little speaker to add a new layer of immersion. Which they also use in, in different ways for various games. That's kind of neat. The Wii Remote was truly innovative, proving that there were still places to go with control schemes. Number 5. Wii U Pro Controller 
you're gonna purchase it separately, but it's probably an accessory that many will consider a must buy. We figure it was only a matter of time before Nintendo's golden age roots would blend with modern control sensibilities. It's a serious controller for serious games. <laughs> Fortunately, what came about was a masterful meshing of philosophies, the Pro Controller, released when the system launched, taking a few cues from its rivals while adhering to Nintendo's typical standards. This is one of, if not the, most comfortable controllers I've ever laid hands on. The twin control sticks, stark black surface, and four face buttons evoke the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 controllers, yet the sense of symmetry and sleekness fits with previous Nintendo efforts. It just makes sense. If you don't agree, you're wrong. Furthermore, the Pro Controller boasts a staggering 80-hour battery life on one charge, and compatibility with more Wii U games than the console's classic controller. More tricks, little magician. Maybe you've got more to offer than I expected. Number four, Super Nintendo Entertainment System Controller. If you want to play Super Nintendo and you only have two controllers here, this is the one to go with. Ah, Nintendo, always looking to shake things up. For the Super Nintendo, a new control scheme was developed, one that shifted from the box-like design of the NES controller to a more rounded shape. You don't have those sharp edges jabbing into your hands. The SNES controller upped the ante with four action buttons arranged in a diamond formation, as well as the introduction of the concept of shoulder buttons. It still retains that old school simplicity, but you're starting to see the, the modern era of multiple buttons everywhere. In addition to its innovative qualities and comfort of use, the Super Nintendo controller also sported a restrained color scheme that managed to be aesthetically respectable without being distracting. You get the feeling you could run over this with a car and really not cause very much damage. Uh, to the controller or the or the car. But fun fact, European and Japanese versions of the controller were the first to have color coordinated buttons, something that our later entries would all soon support. Number three, PlayStation DualShock series. This is one of the greatest video game controllers ever made. While Nintendo's controllers, as we've seen, have gone through drastic redesigns over the years, Sony's iconic DualShock series has remained largely unchanged. And in addition to that, there have been all these features added to it without compromising the basic feel of the DualShock. Originally released in November 1997, the first incarnation of the DualShock analog controller series reinforced the standard of twin analog sticks, marrying those to the classic PlayStation controller design to great effect. You can see that it's basically the exact same thing with the addition of the DualShock analog sticks. The other big feature, a built-in motor for vibration feedback, would prove innovative enough to achieve popularity, with only small tweaks needed for later DualShock models. You know what I'm talking about. Being both pleasant to use and inspirational to other hardware creators, the DualShock brand has more than earned its place in gaming culture. Yeah, it just caught my eye, you know. I, I figured it was a coincidence, but I couldn't get it out of my mind. Number two, Nintendo GameCube controller. This is excellent, very well designed, and extremely comfortable. Conceptually running on a similar mentality as the N64, the GameCube opted to match the shifting nature of control schemes with its wing grip based controller. Fits into the hand very well. The controller itself utilized a layout not unlike that of the Xbox rival, complete with a small right side analog stick while implementing force feedback not possible for the N64 controller, without a rumble pack of course. So say you're shooting something, shoot your gun, force feedback. Force feedback. The ease with which players can access the GameCube's controller's central buttons and the range displayed by the shoulder triggers are matched only by its instantly recognizable shape and layout. <laughs> Plus, despite being 15 years old, the GameCube controller is still supported today through the use of the Wii U GameCube adapter. It's compatible with all types of GameCube controllers, old and new, and can even work with the wireless Waybird controller by putting the receiver in one of its four slots. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. A lot of games out there, not all the games, but a lot of games out there will allow you to um, play the game directly on the gamepad and not have to play it on a TV screen. It's a very comfortable controller and feels almost exactly like the Xbox 360 controller. The NES Advantage was born out of this desire to bring the arcade experience to the home, and it did so by mimicking the appearance of an arcade panel. Number one, Xbox 360 controller. Xbox and Microsoft have really done amazing wonders to their controllers. All of the lessons learned, every mistake and success, all of it contributed to this masterwork. Even with batteries, it'll be lighter, smaller, and more comfortable than today's Xbox controllers. The controller released alongside Microsoft's Xbox 360 console is nothing short of ergonomic in its design, from its carefully spaced thumbsticks to the feel of its letter-marked face buttons. Easy, easy to read, nice, feel good on your thumb. 
neither bulky nor thin, neither flashy nor muted. The Xbox 360 controller is never overwhelming in look or feel. Is it is it comfortable for your paws? Okay, let's mash that button. Inclusions such as buttons based on the Xbox logo and twin bumpers are all useful in some fashion and don't consume a great deal of space. Plus, if you've moved on to the next gen, you'll be happy to know that much like the DualShock controller, Microsoft has stuck with what works and maintained essentially the same design for the Xbox One. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite video game controller? For more admiring top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. All right, let's fire it up. Max, only from Nintendo.